ਵਾਹਿਗੁਰੂ ਜੀ ਕਾ ਖਾਲਸਾ ਵਾਹਿਗੁਰੂ ਜੀ ਕੀ ਫਤਿਹ ਯੂ ਆਰ ਹੇਅਰ ਬਿਕਾਜ਼ ਆਫ ਵਨ ਆਫ ਥੀਸ ਰੀਜ਼ਨਸ ਯੂ ਪਾਰਟਿਸਪੇਟਡ ਇਨ ਥਿਸ ਪੋਲ ਐਂਡ ਵਰ ਵੇਟਿੰਗ ਫਾਰ ਦ ਵੀਡੀਓ ਯੂ ਜਸਟ ਸਟੰਬਲਡ ਅਪਨ ਥਿਸ ਵੀਡੀਓ ਬੇਸਡ ਔਨ ਦ YouTube ਐਲਗੋਰਿਥਮ ਇਨ ਵਿਚ ਕੇਸ ਯੂ ਸ਼ੁਡ ਵਾਚ ਦ ਫਰਸਟ ਪਾਰਟ ਫਰਸਟ ਯੂ ਸਾ ਅਨਦਰ ਵੀਡੀਓ ਆਫ ਐਕਸਪੋਜ਼ਿੰਗ ਐਂਡ ਕੇਮ ਹੇਅਰ ਟੂ ਵਾਚ ਦ ਨੈਕਸਟ ਪਾਰਟ you are here to call me or the sikhs khalistanis as this exposed does not align with your propaganda against sikhi you are a bharat mata hating khalistani you are a pakistani maxic slash macburger if you new well go speak to xo 8 216 432 mahagyani shri man shri shri puneet ji maharaj you khalistani clown face clown face Anyways let's get started in the first part we talked about the existence of 5k and the devi in detail to debunk the claims of puni sahani in his latest video puni talked about the references that i gave on the existence of 5k before the singh sabha and the british period and he ignored them with one line they appeared very late in history after some 250 years that is not a valid argument a scripture can come to light any time there are numerous sikh historical scriptures that were found in the early 20th century and others were found late the argument should always be about the content of the scripture not when it appeared unless they were written late of course those who have gone through the janam sakis know that pai balas puratan and pai mani singh's janam sakis were found in the late 19th or early 20th centuries but meherwan's janam sakhi was published in 1960s originally written in 17th century if i use the same argument i can say this 17th century scripture is of no use as it came into light after the singh sabha period so it is not reliable upanit should have brought a better argument to reject shri gur katha gurkiyan sakhiya and patvahi the one that you brought up was not up to the mark The reason for its rejection was not that they got published late in the 20th century but that they rejected your claim and propaganda. By the way, do you know how many books you used which were published or discovered in the second half of the 20th century? So the patvahi that I gave with the gurmukhi letters was not valid but the one that you used without any gurmukhi letters without any journal name and year to call the guru Nena Devi Bhagat is valid huh hypocrite you know the guy said if these books were found in the 20th century how the singh sabha members could have known about the 5k in the 19th century question for all you sikhs out there you go to gurdwara sahib you bow down to guru gan sahib ji did you read it in a book that sikhs should be doing that before actually doing it you go to harmandar sahib and say it to be built by the guru did you read it in a book before going there you read japji sahib in the morning did you read it in a book that you should read it in the morning before actually reading it no these are all the things that sikhs have been doing pidi dar pidi we don't read historical scriptures to do these things during the time of singh sabha or even before that they did the things that have been there for centuries they did not need a scripture to do their daily tasks what you should and should not do as a sikh is taught to you by your parents or katha vachaks or your friends your circle right yes seeing it to be written in a historical scripture is the task of historians i won't be surprised if tomorrow puneet and like say show me where it is written how to do the prakash of guru granth sahib ji or how to make the kra prashad if it is not written anywhere or found later that means it was added by british lol <laughs> and ask these people about the vedas that how come there were no vedas thousands of years ago and then suddenly there were written scriptures they will tell you about smriti and shruti and how the vedas were remembered by the great brahmins and then they were taught to others and when the time came to write them they wrote from the memory are you saying that the sikhs can't even remember how to make kada prashad or about 5k how to do the prakash of guru granth sahib ji and their other daily tasks without a written guidance but the brahmins could remember the vedas freight that that is fantastic actually 
Puneet talked about Pyara Singh Padam, Dr. Talochan Singh's work, Pai Veer Singh's work too. I will come to that later. So that was the recap of what he did in his video. But let's go back and talk a few things that we did not in the first video. First point, Sikh festivals. Puneet said that Sikhs used to celebrate Diwali. I don't know what he meant by that, to be very frank. Was he speaking about Ram Chandra being returned to Ayodhya and Sikhs were gathering in remembrance of that? Or is it about the name that Bandi Chor is a new name earlier it was Diwali? He did not clear it. If he did, I missed it. But he showed the Hukamnama of Gurteg Bahadur Ji about Diwali. It is true that Sikhs used to gather on some events. It started from the time of Guru Amar Das Ji, the third Sikh Guru. There was a Sikh named Pai Paro at the time of Guru Amar Das Ji. He was such a great Sikh that Pai Guru Das Ji called him Param Hans. He asked the Guru that once in a year the Sikhs should get together to see the Guru and to meet other Sikhs. This was the time when there were not many Gurdwara Sahibs and Guru Granth Sahib Ji was not there yet in the form it is now. The Guru said that the Sikhs should gather in the month of Bisoy, which is Vesak. The Guru then ordered to send the message to other Sikhs. Pai Paro sent it to the Sikhs in other countries. This is how the Vesaki Mela started. Although the 10th Guru created the Khalsa Panth on first Vesak and Sikhs started celebrating that after it, before that, it was to get together to see the Guru and the Sangat. This is from Mama Prakash by Srub Das Palla written in 1776. The same story is mentioned in Suraj Prakash by Pai Santok Singh Ji completed in 1843. This gathering of the Sikhs at Amritsar after the Khalsa creation was so famous that even the Mughal records show the Sikhs going to Amritsar for Darshan and Ishnan. Fatuhat Nama e Samdi, written by Gulam Muhi Uddin in 1722, mentions the Sikhs going to Amritsar once in a year. Ibrat Nama, written by Muhammad Qasim Lahori in 1723, talks about the Sikhs going to Amritsar on Baisakhi and doing the Deep Mala. Were Sikhs doing Deep Mala on Baisakhi? Maybe Muhammad Qasim mixed both Baisakhi and Diwali together. I'm not sure. This is an amazing book that you should buy which has many sources of 18th century talking about Bandha Singh Bahadur and the Sikhs in general. As these are the records of the Mughals, they used all sorts of name calling for the Sikhs like Puneet and Gangdu. This is the reason I call them hybrid Malaysia. There is another book by Dr. Balwant Singh Tillo that should be in your library. It brings us to the second point, Diwali. There is no doubt that the sixth Guru, Guru Hargobind Sahib Ji was imprisoned. There is a near contemporary record of that in the Bistani Majahab. There are different periods mentioned in the historical scripture for how long the Guru was in Gwalior Fort. Baljinder Singh Chimma in his PhD tried to reconcile it with the other sources and said it to be maximum six months. Anyways, the question is what happened when the Guru was released from the Gwalior Fort. Gyani Garja Singh, who spent most of his life to learn about the letters of Vahiya and then reading them for Sikh history, gives us a Pat Vahi where it is mentioned the Guru was released on Katak Vadi 14. Nayak Hari Ram Droga, Beta Harbans Lalka, Pota Thakar Daska, Padpota Taram Chandka, Bansa Radha Krishan Ki, Chand Bansi. Jadav Bhartiya Kanavatne, Sammat Sola So Shyatar, Kattik Badi Chaudas Ke Deho, Bandi Chor, Guru Hargobin Ji Ke Bavan, Rajyo Ke Saath Bandan Mukt Hoye Ke Aane Ki Khushi Me Deep Mala Ki. Sari Nagari Me Khushiyan Ke Badal Chai Gai. Guru Ji Ek Divas Naik Hari Ram Ke Grah Me Nivas Kar Ke, Badai Ghi Li, Raste Ka Pand Mukai, Agre Baadsha Jahangir Ke Paas Chai Nivas Kiya. As far as I have seen, Diwali is celebrated on Masya of Kattak. Sometimes it is celebrated one day before Masya. I don't know why. But some jantris that I have gone through show like this. So the day when the Guru was released, they did the Deep Mala. A day before Masya. This same is mentioned in the preface of Guru Kiyan Sakya. In Sola Sostatar Bikarmi, 
the Guru came to Amritsar and Deep Mala was done by the Sikhs. But the date mentioned in the Vahi is of the month Mag, the solar date, not the lunar. Some argue that on that day it was not Diwali, but the Sikhs believe the day the Guru returned to Amritsar was on Diwali. Maybe the month was written wrongly or the date was wrongly written instead of Magar the Vahi mentioned Mag, as both have Mamma and Kagga. One thing is for sure that the Deep Mala was done in the year when the Guru came out of the fort, second when he returned to Amritsar. There are many places in Guru Kiyan written in 1790 which talk about the Sikhs gathering on Baisakhi and Diwali slash Bandichod. Now the question is, what did they do? Did they celebrate the coming of the king of Ayodhya? No. It is the darshan of the Guru that they went for, not for anything related to Ramchandra. Pai Ratan Singh Pangu mentioned the Sikhs coming to Amritsar on Diwali and Baisakhi and they listen to Gyan, meaning Gurbani. They keep their mind at the feet of the Guru. Even Princep mentioned in 1834 the gathering of the Sikhs on Diwali and Baisakhi for Gurmata. In the Hukumnam of Guru Tegh Bahadur Ji that Puneet showed, we see the same thing written, come for the darshan, nothing related to Ramchandra Ji. Puneet did not show the Hukumnamas of Guru Gobind Singh Ji as he did not find the English translation. Let me show you the original. Written in 1750 Bikarmi, the Guru mentioned to come on Baisakhi and bring Peta too. Written in 1756 Bikarmi, the Guru asked to come on Diwali for Darshan and bring Peta by themselves, meaning not through Masants. Is it enough? Okay, there is one connecting point here related to the creation of the year of the Khalsa. Puneet gave the lame argument of how Pai Sukha Singh mentioned the year and it was copied by Gyan Gyan Singh and then Ganda Singh Bhu. The year is the final year which is 1699. Here are the dates that Puneet gave. Gursoba does not have any year for the creation of the Khalsa. Bansavli Nama's date he wrongly mentioned. There are Gurupranaliya too where the year for the Khalsa creation is mentioned as 1756 Vikrami. Dr. Ganda Singh gave a good argument to prove 1756 Bikarmi as the correct year. He said the first time the Hukumnam of Guru Gobind Singh Ji mentioned the Sangat as Khalsa was some 19 days before the Khalsa creation in 1699. And not to give the peta to my sons. On the day of Besaki, 1756 Bikarmi, that is 1699 AD, the Khalsa Panth was revealed. If the Khalsa Panth was created before 1699, then Sangat as Khalsa would have appeared in the earlier Hukamnamas of Guru Gobind Singh Ji too. But that is not the case. And the first dated Hukamnama that we have is of 1748 Bikarmi, meaning 1692 AD. We don't see the word Sangat is Khalsa till just before the beginning of 1756 Bikarmi in Guru Gobind Singh Ji's Hukamnamas. By the way, did you see the peta on Diwali and Besakhi written in the Hukamnama or not? Or you are just listening to what I am saying? Pay attention to everything that you are seeing on your screen. That is very important. So, yes, Sikhs used to celebrate Diwali. Sikhs still celebrate Diwali slash Pandichor. But that is not related to Ram Chandraji. That is not related to Lakshmi Puja. There are different things that Sikhs do on these festivals. There is one more important point that I would like to highlight. Jess Garewal, Puneet's favorite writer, <laughs> mentioned in the Sikhs of Punjab that at the time of Guru Amar Das Ji, Sikhs used to visit Goindwal on Diwali and Besakhi. But he did not give any reference. In the Golden Temple past and present by Madan Jeet Kaur, it is mentioned when Harmandar Sahib was built, the Sikhs who lived far from Amritsar, they used to come on Diwali and Besakhi at the time of the fifth Sikh Guru. She wrote it based on Suraj Prakash. So even if the Bandichor Divas was celebrated during the 6th Guru, there are chances that the Sikhs visited Darwar Sahib on Diwali and Baisakhi. It is like Baisakhi gathering was started by Guru Amar Das Ji but Guru Gobind Singh Ji created the Khalsa on the same day. Similarly, Diwali might have started at the time of Guru Arjan Dev Ji 
or Guru Amar Das Ji if there is any reference. But the Bandish or Zivas turned it into a double celebration. One may also look at the events of these gatherings as the Sikh Gurus starting new institutions separate and distinct from other major religions to have a distinct identity of the Sikhs. The Guru is not saying to visit temples or worship Ramchandra, Lakshmi and other personalities of the Hindu religion on these occasions. The Gurus are giving a new thing to have their own rules on these occasions. MacLeod argued that the third Sikh Guru should not have built Govindwal or have it Tirath as it was against the principles of Guru Nanak Dev Ji. He overlooked the writing of Guru Amar Das Ji which aligns with the first Gurus. Secondly, this place Govindwal was another thing that separated the Sikhs from other religions. They had their own place to go to rather than others, you know. Upinder Jeet Kaur in Sikh identity gave it some weight. You can also read what Pai Sahib Singh wrote about it. Next, it brings us to the Singh Sabha movement, which is highly misjudged by MacLeod and his associates. If you look at the writing of MacLeod, he will ignore the scriptures or arguments of that time by just using the line, it has the influence of Singh Sabha, rather than giving arguments against or in favor. The same thing is done by Puneet and all those who look at Sikhi through MacLeod's lenses. We can call them Maclees, <laughs> a good term for them. Anyway, Singh Sabha movement was started not mainly due to Hindu encroachment in the Gurdwaras and affecting its practices. It all started when the four Sikhs thought of leaving Sikhi and joining Christianity. One event led to another and then another. If you read the history of that period, what Sikhs did, their contribution not only to Sikhi, but education, equality, banks, schools, that would amaze you. Gyani Harpreet Singh, Jathedar Shri Kaal Takhat Sahib, once said that the Sikhs of that time gathered some 70 plus old historical scriptures. This was how hard they were trying to talk about the real Sikhi, which got polluted by the Brahminical practices. Connecting point of that period, you might have heard the idols present around the Sarovar of Harmandar Sahib, right? I wrote about it some time back that when Mukhalif visited Harmandar Sahib on the occasion of Diwali in 1880, he did not see any idols around Sarovar. Now, Madanjit Kaur helps us to understand when they might have appeared. In 1883, the Hindu priests appeared in Darbar Sahib. And that would be the downfall of the practices of Sikh faith. After this, the idols may be there. She also mentioned that literature was also sold around Darbar Sahib. That is why the Sikhs started struggling to get back their Gurdwaras and establish the Mriyada. The priests of Darbar Sahib did not even take the so-called low-caste Sikhs Prashad. This is what they did to the Sikh places. Teja Singh in 1922 mentioned about an incident in Kabul in 1905 that a priest quietly installed an idol in Kabul's Gurdwara Sahib and how it turned into the favor of the Sikhs and idol was removed. A similar incident seems to have happened in Darbar Sahib. I truly believe that there were no idols till 1881. That is for sure. Perhaps it was added after that, maybe a few days or weeks before they were removed. One thing is certain, it came with the Bamans, not with the philosophy of the Gurus. Even the priests of Nander went against the Singh Sabha when they learned that Muslims, low caste and women were getting baptized. This is how much diluted the minds of these people had become. The same incident of idol placing happened when Guru Granth Sahib's roof was removed and replaced with an idol. This Gurdwara was handled by an Udasi where he was following Guru Granth Sahib Ji. Remember these Maklis saying that Udasis and Nirmalas always consider themselves as Hindus and worship the deities? <laughs> Lol. <laughs> Let's move to the scholars of Singh Sabha. The Maklis usually have only two names, Pai Veer Singh and Pai Kan Singh Nabha. 
Let me say this, Puneet. If you really call yourself a Sikh, if you really, really, really call yourself a Sikh, you should start reading Gyanin Dit Singh's work. Pyo, pyo, ke chitter mare hoye ho, na ne tere vargyan de muh te. O hal kitta tere vargyan da, ke shabdan de chh bayan nii kitta ja saada. Es kar ke, onna de kitabam pad, te nu pata lagge, ke sikhi hai ki chij. Kyunki tere vargyan ho to bho sikhe ho, os samay loog, te onna nu sahi raad khon de li, bhoot likhtaan likhiyan Gyanin Dit Singh hoona de. Onna da kam pad putt du, dekhi te nu majhe hoon de fir. Okay. MacLeod in his books mentioned Pai Khan Singh Nabba would pick anything from a scripture and leave the other things that he did not like. That is absolutely preposterous. A person who has read even one of his major works knows how big of a lie it is. If he rejected something, he did that based on Gurbani, not randomly like MacLeod did by assuming Singh Sabha's influence on authors rather than giving good arguments. Let me summarize the whole work of MacLeod and Abrai in a few words before moving on. Suppose you are a non-Punjabi guy living in, let's say, Argentina, and you have never met a Sikh before you come to Punjab, see turban people and learn they are called Sikhs. You see some of them have full beards, some have cut their beards, some eat non-vetch, some vetch, some Sikhs drink, some don't. Some Sikhs go to temples to worship idols. Some Sikhs go to Gurdwaras. Some Sikhs are Sikhs. Some are Maclis. <laughs> so, the Argentinian guy, if he were MacLeod or Obrai or their associates, he would say there is no demarcation of Sikh identity as Sikhs eat non veg drink, cut beard and go to temples. His focus will not be on what the Guru said and wrote, but what the Sikhs are doing against Gurmat. It is not the teachings of the Gurus that matter to him, but the wrongs of the Sikhs. He won't look at the scriptures, Sakhis, aligned with Guru Sahiban's writing, but anti Gurmat stuff. This is the summary of their whole work. With this logic, even in today's time, when the Singh Sabha's identity of Sikhi <coughs> has come into picture, we can say Sikhs are unaware of their identity as not everybody follows Kurmat. This is how they see and understand Sikh identity. Read any of their books. You will see this thing in every single one of them. So, we were talking about Pai Khan Singh Napa. If you have read Gurmat Sudhakar's beginning, you will see why he rejected and accepted the stories from the same historical scripture. I will let you read this. The thing is, for Singh Sabha members, history was important. But more important than that was Gurbani. We know that almost all the historical scriptures were written by the Sikhs, so there are chances of some anti Gurmat stories and influence of other faiths. So, Gurbani is always at the top of the historical scriptures, as Gurbani is the spoken words of the Gurus. But it is not the case with MacLeod. He looks for all sorts of anti Gurmat stories opposite to Gurbani and use that for his facts and theories. Next, Puneet talked about the omission of the words by Dr. Trilochan Singh, Pyara Singh, Padam, and Pai Veer Singh. Let's look into that because that is such a big issue that he has made. To reject Dr. Trilochan Singh's work, especially his book that I asked you guys to read, he said Dr. Trilochan Singh did the wrong translation of the Rahatnamma. I am pretty sure that Puneet did not even use 0.00. .00 1% of his brain to go through what it really was. Just read it what MacLeod wrote and started blabbering. MacLee, if you quote anything, please make sure you mention the name of the book for others to see and respond. Anyways, the book is The Turban and the Sword of the Sikhs by Dr. Trilochan Singh. The theme of the book is the creation of the Khalsa. What, why, how and where. These questions are answered in the book. He also mentioned some parts of the Rehtnamme. Nowhere Dr. Trilochan Singh mentioned that he would be translating the whole Rehtnamme. 
or line by line translation. Nor Pai Kan Singh Nabba wrote the whole Rehatname. Specifically, Pai Kan Singh Nabba used the verses that were relevant to the topic he was discussing. So saying, they skipped the line of Brahmin or cow is very childish. If he is saying there is no caste in Sikhi, he would use those verses where he talks about no caste. No avatar worshipping use those verses. No idol worshipping use those verses. Saying these both scholars remove the lines on purpose is really funny. They did not pick anything from the historical scriptures or Rehatnames which were against Gurmat, which was against Guru's teachings or Gurbani. It is the opposite of what you guys are doing. Okay, now Dr. Tillochan Singh's seventh point that he mentioned in the book is not the whole translation of 15th stanza. It is the combination of many and the last line which is said to be from nowhere is from 22nd stanza. Guru Sarup Khalsa Haiye The Khalsa is the image of the Guru. Jin ki tehal param sukh lahiye Serving whom supreme happiness is attained. So, at least pura padhya kare yaar tu bani tu. Hain? Matlab, kuch bhi matlab, keda nasha karda yaar matlab, kuch bhi bodan lag gaya na tu. Kuta kar dekhta lai tu bolda ki piyan yaar, kuch sense banna chahi da tedi galda. Hain na? I don't know which line of Pyara Singh Padam is said to be altered by him in Rehat Nama, but the point Puneet was making was that Khalsa initialization was only for men. One major issue that you can find in MacLeod's work is if there are two contradictory views he got from the historical scriptures, he would choose the one that is not accepted in Sikhi. He won't give a reason to accept something or reject something. But is it true that women were not allowed to be a member of the Khalsa? No, it is not. Teja Singh, like I showed earlier, mentioned the priests of the South speaking against the baptism of Muslims, the so-called low castes and women. Maybe some people wanted to keep the baptism to upper class and men, but the Guru's teachings were not that. That meant the Singh Sabha members were giving Khande Di Pahul without any discrimination. J.D. Cunningham in his 1849 History of the Sikhs says, Hi. Okay, yes, some people would have discriminated against the Sikh women, but nonetheless, they were part of the Khalsa. Also, Prem Sumara Ganth of the 18th century sends love. Same is mentioned in Guru Kiyan written in 1790. Now, Prem Sumara Ganth is also translated by MacLeod and Gang. If we really wrote, as Puneet showed, that Amrit should not be given to women based on a Rehtnama, did he not see it in Prem Sumarak Granth and perhaps changed his thoughts or corrected his mistake? Only MacLeese can answer that. Third is about Pai Veer Singh. Surjit Hans and Harinder Singh Chopra wrote in a journal that Pai Veer Singh replaced the words like Hindu with Sikh while publishing Pai Ratan Singh Pangu's Puratan Panth Prakash and there were other changes he made. Before we move on with this point, let me tell you that there are three editions of Puratan Panth Prakash. Pai Veer Singh's, Dr. Jeet Singh Sital, which he said he used Pai Veer Singh's to publish. And third one is by Dr. Balwan Singh Tillo. He published it after this whole controversy of words changed by Pai Veer Singh. Dr. Balwan Singh Tillo mentioned the article of Surjit Hans and Chopra where they level the accusations against Pai Veer Singh's editing skills of Pratan Panth Prakash in the preface of his edition. Dr. Balwan Singh Tillo also mentioned that Pai Ratan Singh Pangu wrote two Panth Prakash based on his own writing. Which one got to us? Did Pangu edit his work in his lifetime as there are two Panth Prakash he wrote? Did Pai Veer Singh have a manuscript that did not reach us? Even the one from where it was published the first time in 1914, Pai Veer Singh did not have it anymore. But another one he found to edit it again. I tried to find the first edition of Pratan Panth Prakash but could not find it. It would be great if somehow we have it to see what is there in the first edition that is not there in the second one 
siariya biariya words anything right it should be noted that when pai v singh was publishing suraj prakash some people asked him to remove the sakis which were not according to gurmat but pai v singh did not do that he wrote long footnotes wherever necessity was there to say how the story or line was not according to gurmat he used gurbani and other historical scriptures to come to a conclusion when we know suraj prakash has some good number of anti gurmat lines and pai v singh did not delete anything there what would be the need to remove it while publishing pratan panth prakash if he ever did anyways here are some points that sujith hans and harinder singh chopra raised about pai v singh's editing that he replaced hindu word with sikh if pai ratan singh pangu believed that sikhs were hindus as surjit han suggested in the article then pai v singh would have debunked it like he did with the similar story in suraj prakash rather than replacing the word second about the chandi or devi lines deleted by him pai v singh wrote some 59 pages in the footnote in suraj prakash to talk about the devi and how it is against gurmat i mean the devi of maklis why would he remove it in pratan panth prakash then funny thing is in pai v singh's edition of pratan panth prakash he wrote in the footnote to look at his book on the devi when the prasang of devi comes third argument was he replaced the word danga if he really replaced this and was not like this in the manuscript from where he was copying then why did he not replace it in dange the prasang heading in the heading the word danga is there in this singh so dange o kab tale jin ki aadat dang hove prasanne kart hi ad hai dang aur jang and many other places puneet is so so lame that he does not even read before coming to the circus of sanjay he said pai veer singh removed the line tum khal se ho hindu taram but he did not he did not delete this line so how come pai veer singh forgot to remove all these things hans and chopra did not have an answer to this so they said pai veer singh or his associate might have forgotten to remove it so on one hand he cleverly removed the words verses and on the other he forgot to remove some of them lol not a good argument so this verse tum khalse ho hindu tar what happened is a bamman came to khalsa that his wife is taken by kasurian so khalsa should help him then the bamman says tum khalse ho hindu tar meaning khalsa is to protect the hindu he further said that gurunanak dev ji's panth is known for the warrior spirit chatri karam the second line shows the translation of the first a similar request was made to guru teg bahadur ji by the brahmins and the story is mentioned in panth prakash so the brahman was saying that he came under the refuge of the khalsa without this place where would he go for help he removed his turban too This is the meaning of the line which is changed by Maclis. This is a long sakhi so I will skip it. Another similar mistranslation was done by Hans that Sikhs worshiped Ganesh. What the line means is that Sikhs worship the granth like Ganesh. In Hinduism Ganesh is worshiped in the beginning. It is to show what the Sikhs worship. According to Hans Pai Veer Singh forgot to remove this. <laughs> Similar things are there like Janak, Mahurat, and other things that they raised in their article, which Pai Veer Singh mentioned in more detail in the footnotes of Suraj Prakash. The answers that he has already given in the Suraj Prakash, or the answers that he already knew, there would not be any need to remove anything in the Panth Prakash. This was the whole thing of Pai Veer Singh changes Puratan Panth Prakash. As we are talking about the wrong translations and omitting the lines let's talk about the real person who did it the new zealander w h macleod the father of macleis in his translation of pai choppa singh's rehtnama macleod added the word kesatari in the translation which is not there in the gurmukhi and he added that himself in the book the gurmukhi lines 
if you find the word Kesata written in 54th line, I will give you 20,000 pounds in cash. Look carefully. Instead of Gursik, he used the word Kesata Rikursik. Why? Because he wanted to use this as a fact that Sahajdari used to cut their hair. He put Sahajdari too along with Kesatari in the second half of the line. In the above line, it said Sahajdari can remove body hair but not face hair, meaning beard and moustache. In the next line, the Rahatnamma says, Gursik should not do it. It is a dilemma. So instead of using the other sources to confirm this, he put Kesatari word to appropriate the translation as the Sahajdari was written above. So, he assumed that the next one is for Kesatari, but the original does not say so. So, you are saying a Sahajdari should not cut his beard, moustache, head hair, will come to that, pubes, but body hair? Of course, of course, it makes sense. <laughs> Second is, there should not be any paddan, as it is called mundan in Hinduism. A Sahajdari should not do the mundan on the death. But our great New Zealander did the mundan of the dead guy, <laughs> rather than the person participating in the last rites in his translation. Okay, so if you find the words in Gurmukhi that can be translated into may have been a Sahajdari instead of a Sahajdari, there will be another 20,000 pounds for you. Third, the sinister translation of Pai Gurdas Ji's verse body. Pai Gurdas Ji mentioned how some of the people were looking at Guru Hargobind Sahib Ji when the Guru armed the Sikhs. He also mentioned the reality, then what the common folks were talking. Now, here MacLeod is doing line by line translation of that. But where is the fifth line's translation? Another 20,000 pounds for you if you find it. Dr. Dalochan Singh mentioned MacLeod did not give the translation of the last line. But I think in his own weird way, he translated the line in his pride still lies line. Now think, you are learning about Sikhi and by some bad luck you stumbled upon MacLeod's work and read this line. This one encourages scoundrels. This is about Guru Hargobind Sahib Ji, that the Guru encourages scoundrels. You have no prior knowledge of Sikhi and what happened in some 239 years of Guru Sahiban's period. What kind of image will you have of the Sikh Gurus? Many translators gave some story of what the original line Doki Dusta Agu Mohilaya means or perhaps a name. But trust me, you can never translate it how MacLeod did. Dr. Talochan Singh took a strong note of that. And by the way, find me the translation of the Punjabi word Agu in MacLeod's translation. So the guy, as Puneet showed, who was translating the words Jap, Tap in his writing, forgot to translate this word and mistranslated the words Dokhidust. Now you can see why the Maclees love MacLeod and gang for these wrong translations and lame facts without evidence. I can speak more on MacLeod's unscrupulous theories about Nanakanti, Sahajdari, Sikh identity, Jat's influence on arming the Sikhs, etc. But this video will go on for longer than it should be. I will end this point by taking a page out of Puneet's book that he uses for Pai Khan Singh Nabba. Yeh MacLeod a badmash aadmi tha. Apni kitabo mein isne badmashi ki hui hai. Next is Puneet said, Sikhs did not know about the birth date of the Sikh Gurus. During Singh Sabha movement, they collected these dates. This is such a big lie that a person who has read any Sikh historical scripture can catch this. We have Janam Saki, Panth Prakash, Mehma Prakash, Surj Prakash, Guru Nanak Prakash, Pansavli Nama, Guru Bilasis, Guru Gya Sakya, Guru Pranalya, and many more historical scriptures which have the Prakash Purub and Jyoti Jyot dates of the Sikh Gurus. You may find some differences between the dates, but saying Sikhs did not know them is a lie. Sikhs used to celebrate the Prakash Purub of the Sikh Gurus. Pai Gurdas Ji's Vara and Guru Kya Sakya mentioned it. If they did not know, how did they celebrate then? 
So on what basis did he say that? Did he just believe what O'Brien wrote? Did not he go through the actual sources to find the truth? मतलब कुछ भी बस बोलन लग जो अपना ही राजा कि कोई बैठा वा जिन्हों पता वा सारे बोंगे बंद तेन सुनने वाले कुछ नहीं पता जो कुछ मर्जी उन्होंने कही या उन्होंने मनी जानी सच्चिया कहानियाँ दिस इज़ फनी ओके डू यू नो पुनीत सैट द केस ऑन द हैड वॉज नॉट फॉर एवरी वन बट फॉर द फाइटिंग फोर्स वेर इज द एविडेंस डू वेर इज द एविडेंस नाइनटी परसेंट ऑफ द थिंग्स दैट यू से आर विदाउट एविडेंस If you somehow show evidence, that will be just conjectures. Like he showed Bashara Singh's work about how Macaulay changed the five hathiyar to five k. You can't call it evidence. Oh, by the way, there is another evidence of five k before Macaulay's article appeared in the journals. It is from 1877 in the infamous book of Ernest Trump. who maclees loved to quote but did not even read it once so the proof that macaulay changed the five hathiyar to 5k by seeing the 1881 article stands inaccurate even if one ignores gurkya sakhya patwai and shir gurkata you can see how desperate maclord gang was to disprove the basic principles of sikhi by alleging the 5k and rahat to be created by either macaulay or singh sabha this is so lame before this gang throws this on pai pai singh or pai gan singh now but let me say they were not even adult in 1877 and pai vi singh ji was just 5 years old puneet also showed this but he did not give any reference but mughal uh, usme he also talked about sawai ja singh coming to the aid of the guru we'll see to that and his lawyer going to the mughal court Puneet, can you provide some reference to that for my understanding at least? I can understand that a person may forget the name of the book, like you said, Mughal Usme. But dude, you prepared a PPT beforehand. Why did you not include the sources of all the things you are claiming? Anyways, I figured it out that he showed it from Garewal and it found book on the Sikh history from Persian sources. इस नो पंडना सारा दिन बस बात चौंधी रेफरेंस यूज़ करने हैं सही जा रहे हैं पोते तो बिल्कुल सही जा रहे हैं. It is from the reports from Bahadur Shah's court. Now listen carefully. Did you read just what he underlined? If yes, you need to keep your eyes peeled. Otherwise, you will fall in the pit where these people are goading you. Read the last lines that the kinship and marriages were given up between the Khalsa and others. But these clowns love to claim that Macaulay or Singh Sabha used a wedge to split Sikhs and Hindus. It is your reference, dude. You did not even read the whole page, did you? Dr. Ganda Singh also said that these people run behind Macaulay for all sorts of things. But do you know what the Amar Nama, the scripture written around the time of the Jyoti Jyot of Guru Gobind Singh Ji, says about who martyred the Sahib Jade? I am waiting for these people to say how the Amar Nama was written or changed by a Makali. <laughs> okay, Rahat Nama say the same that a Sikh should marry a Sikh. So the rules of the Rahat Nama date back to the beginning of the 18th century, maybe around 1699. For this point. Let me show it from your favorite author's work, Pai Kan Singh Naba, where he quoted Prem Sumar Granth and Pai Daya Singh's Rahat Nama, and Guru Sobha Granth gave an interesting story that how some people said in Delhi after the creation of the Khalsa that the Guru did not give any Rahat because it was such a blow to the old traditions that they could not just comprehend it. I wrote an article on that. that you can read all the links in the description of the video if khalsa were like any other group even with the taram nash kul nash karam nash as punit put in to have the khalsa under the big umbrella then the people in delhi should have accepted the khalsa rahat as it is <coughs> just for fighting purpose pahadi rajesh should have accepted it too but they did not because they could not follow the rahat dude thinks that everyone is like them ganga ge ta ganga ram jamna ge ta jamna das rahat is the core of sikhi man you can't call yourself a sikh if you are not following the rahat and about swai jasing the khalsa maybe bandi khalsa 
sent the letter to him in 1711 to join the forces with them against the Mughals. Another letter of 1711 by Ahmad Khan showed Jai Singh joining the forces with Mughals against the Sikhs. Dr. Ganda Singh in the biography of Baba Banda Singh Bahadur gave a long list of names who stood against the Sikhs. Aid for the Guru, huh? Cool man, you are absolutely right. -er. That's all folks. Already become a long video. We will cover the Gurta Gaddi of Guru Granth Sahib Ji about the flags, Makalif, about Shiva and many other topics in the third part, which may be after a month. I know some of you wanted to have both a video and Twitter threads for this. So I decided to write Twitter threads on these topics. I hope this video cleared up some of your doubts. Vaheguru Ji Ka Khalsa, Vaheguru Ji Ki Fateh.